everyone. All right. Um, so today we're going to be learning about Cordova, a little bit about PhoneGap, uh, and our, our goals for today are to try and get something on our device, get some sort of app on our device so we can we can play around with it, we can test it, um, uh, and then depending on uh, time and, and how you guys are feeling, we can we can do even more, really try to build an app. Uh, but that might be best for another day, so we'll, we'll see how it is. Uh, I know a lot of you are still trying to download various things uh, that were in the requirements, mainly to do with Android. Um, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm going to show a few different ways about how to get your, your, your mobile applications onto your devices for testing. So if your Android development, if your Android environment isn't set up, or if you're if you haven't been able to download Xcode for those of you that are on Mac, it's all right. There's a, a different way that we can get around this. Uh, I'm going to try and not talk too much up here. I'm going to do some slides just to, so everyone kind of understands what Cordova is. Um, and then I'll do some demos just showing how to use it, how to work with it, uh, and the file structure, things like that. Uh, and then from there, we'll split up into little groups, uh, and then you guys can play around with it yourselves as well. Uh, and feel free to stop me anytime, ask any questions that you have, even if they're really, really dumb, I'm okay with that, just throw them at me. Um, and let's go from there. So hopefully you guys have, you know, seen the workshop doc document, cordola.md here in, on, uh, in the Cyber Wizard Institute GitHub, uh, and you've had a chance to start going through the requirements. The only two things that we really need for today is if you could install Cordova, npm install dash g Cordova, and PhoneGap. Uh, and I'll get into why PhoneGap a little later, but for now, those are the only two things that you need. If you have managed to make your way through setting up your Android development, that's great. We're definitely going to cover that. Um, and then for those of you on Mac, all you really need is Xcode 6 or higher. Um, yeah. So let's get started. So, what is Apache Cordova? Uh, before I get into what Cordova is, let's talk about what it's, what it's like right now if you're trying to develop mobile apps. Right now, there are a bunch of different operating systems out there for mobile phones. You have iOS, you have Android, and all its variations. You have Windows Phone, which runs Windows. You have BlackBerry, which runs BlackBerry OS, I think it is. And then, you know, nowadays you're seeing things like Firefox OS. Ubuntu is coming out with a phone. Amazon has their own phone that runs Fire OS. So, you know, a big thing that you're seeing is that if you want to develop for all of these devices, you have to learn multiple languages. For Android, you need Java. Sorry, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> for Android, you need to know Java. For iOS, you need to know Objective-C or, or Swift now. Uh, you know, all of these things seem to have their own languages. Firefox OS, that's, it's like a mobile operating system. It's a, it's a web-based operating system. So for those guys who just need to write their apps in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, another problem is, you know, if you're doing this, you have multiple code bases you have to deal with. Uh, another thing is you're going to need a Mac and a Windows if you want to target everything, because for Windows development you need a Windows machine. For Mac, obviously for iPhone development you need a Mac. Uh, it's just a lot of investment of time. You know, <laughs> this is how developers feel. The solution is Cordova, so it allows you to build cross-platform mobile applications using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So these are hopefully skills you're all already learning, how to build websites, how to build web apps. Corova allows you to essentially take your web app, package them up into native apps, and deploy them into app stores, install them onto your devices, etc. Um, how does Cordova work? This is a fun question. Um, so all the one thing that all these devices have in common is they have a browser. They all have a browser. You know, all the ones I mentioned. Um, even if they're in different languages, they all output, you know, the browsers can render HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. 
So the way we do it is we create a native app for every single application in whatever language they're in. So for iOS, it's Objective-C, Android, Java. And the very first thing this app does that we created, it opens up uh, a, a web view instance. So a web view instance is, is what the browser is showing. It's a web view. The browser is a web view that has your URL at the top, has your back and forward buttons, like all those things that you're accustomed to in a browser. It's essentially that browser without the URL, the back and forth buttons. It's just a full screen browser. So we just open this up. That's the first thing we do in this app. And then we created this bridge um, that can talk between the JavaScript side and the native side. Uh, so we create, so using this bridge, <coughs> we can pass messages back and forth between native and JavaScript. So this is what gives us access to being able to use native features in devices that you don't actually have access to when you're just in a browser. If you're in a browser and you want to, say, grab a contact off the person's phone, browsers don't have an API to be able to actually get that information from a user. There's no way a browser can access that. But with Cordova, we have a plugin that you can install that has a JavaScript side and a native side. You only ever need to play with the JavaScript side. You don't have to worry about the native code at all. And what it does is it installs the native code in the native project, and then, and then the JavaScript code will go in your WW directory, and then you can actually uh, access contacts via JavaScript, which the call will go through this little bridge we created to the native side, ask it in native, native will respond, come back across the bridge, and it'll respond to you in JavaScript. So that's the whole premise of how Cordova works. It's, it's just a web view with a bridge to access any API that's native, and you could bring that information back, whatever information you want. Uh, platforms that Cordova supports, pretty much everything that's out there. Um, one of Cordova's main goals has always been to implement web standards. So the browser is always getting new APIs. You know, that's what HTML5 did, and whatever HTML6 will be, you know, they're always introducing new ways to get information, uh, to uh, even have some standards to get uh, say you want to access the camera in the browser. <laughs> Two years ago you couldn't do that, but now there is an API within the browser introduced through, I think, the HTML5 spec where you can access the camera from your browser. Before that, you could never do it. So for Cordova, we created a plugin to, to do this exact thing. And in a way, we've been trying to implement things that we hope one day become standards. And in another way, we see standards that are being defined and we try to implement them in Cordova so hopefully one day, as you write your Cordova app, once the browsers catch up and offer these same APIs that you're using in your app, you should just be able to take your app, put it in a browser, and all the things work. That's the dream one day. Uh, I also want to just take a second and, and clear up any confusions around the different types of apps. So you've heard me say web app a few times. Uh, another common term you'll hear is native app. Native app is written generally in the in the language that the operating system offers for writing apps in. So you know Java, Objective C, things that I've already mentioned. Uh, and then uh, a web app is just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Cordova apps are generally we call hybrid apps because we take your web app, we package it into a native app, and we give you access to a bunch of native features via JavaScript. Uh, so if you hear me jumping around saying hybrid, web, native, hopefully you guys know the difference. A web app is essentially a website. You can go to a URL, look at it. You know, if you go to facebook.com on your phone, that's a, a web app. These are all the companies that contribute to Cordova. It's, you know, pretty much the who's who's of the mobile world. Everyone except Apple.
people using one of these frameworks to, to build their apps. It's just a lot easier to go off something that a lot of people are using, that's responsive, that already has a ton of guides and sample apps out there. So you can just like grab some other sample apps, put them in your Cordova project and, and try it out. So I would definitely recommend checking out some of these and there's so many more. Um, here's some useful links, it doesn't matter. We can look at them later. Cordova.io is the main one. Yeah? Are the frameworks required? Uh, no. And actually in the Hello World app we're going to be going through today, we don't have a framework. Because frameworks require you to generally go read about them, include them in your apps, learn about what their patterns are for using and incorporating that into your application. So it's, it's a good amount of reading and understanding, but documentation is fairly, is pretty good because these frameworks are very widely used. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna go back to the workshop. So, you know, I, I've already kind of individually gone through and, and walked through some of the setup for Android development uh, with you guys today, uh, so I'm, I'm not gonna spend much time on it now. Uh, the gist of it is download the SDK for Android. You have to add them to your path, which generally means for Mac, add it to your Bash profile. For Linux, add it to your Bash RC. Um, the path variable, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Um, when your terminal starts up every time, there's this very, there's this, uh, the terminal will go and read these files, bash profile, bash rc, uh, and it creates a, a variable called path. Uh, and whatever is in your path is, ac is accessible by your terminal from no matter which directory you're in. So for instance, git, everyone here has been using git. Git is included in your path. When you install git for the first time, it got included in your path. Some tools will automatically include themselves in your path, but uh, in our case for Android development, um, we have to add it to our path ourselves. And as I've been helping people out, I've been seeing there's so many weird issues that can come. So this part seems to be very confusing, and I've been seeing issues with creating your Android virtual device, which is gonna be the emulator that some of you will be able to use. But if you run into any weird issues, don't know what's going on, just come talk to me and we can figure it out. So once you add it to your path, you have to reset your terminal. You can either close your terminal or you could use this command, source, bash rc, or bash profile if you're on Mac. Uh, and then once that's done, we're gonna, Android will be in our path. No matter where we are in our terminal, if we type Android, it will launch the Android tools. <coughs> So I'm going to type it. <coughs> uh, and it'll have a bunch of packages selected by default. Currently for Cordova, uh, it needs API 19. So if you didn't know this and you continued on the rest of the steps, it would ping you and it would give you a message in the terminal saying you need API 19 installed. Uh, yeah. Guess I got to change my display settings. There's an API 19 here, and then you just want to install the SDK platform for that. Uh, and then click install packages, install it. A bunch of you have already gone through this, some of you are still going through it, it's fine. Uh, you may need Java if you don't already have it installed. For Linux, sudo apt get install this. For Mac, you'll get prompted to go install it, and it'll, like, it'll take you to the website, or it'll try to install it itself. Depends on which version of Mac you have. Um, and then once you're done, run Android again. Um, make sure it's, you know, make sure it's installed. Uh, uh, and then we also need ant for Android development. Uh, so for Linux, you can just go sudo apt-get install ant. For Mac, I'm recommending people go get homebrew. So if you follow this link, uh, hope 
you essentially just need to install Homebrew, and then once you have that installed, you can go through install and it's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, for iOS development, if you have a Mac, all you need is Xcode 6. It's a pretty big download too. I know some of you are downloading it right now. Uh, but let's move on. Let's actually try to create an app. Let's talk about this, see what they look like. I'm going to do a fresh install of Cordova. Give me a couple minutes. Here. I actually have a question. Yeah. So when we did the create my app thing, yeah. um, it says, now it says it's downloading Cordova library for www. Yeah. So what is that? Mean? Good question. Um, so when you do Cordova create whatever, uh, Cordova by default will install its template app. So it'll already kind of have like a Hello World app ready to go for you. Uh, so what, what you're seeing 
seeing there is it's actually the Cordova CLI tool is actually going to our Apache server, fetching this www directory, and then installing it into your app that you just made. So while we wait for this to install, uh, we can actually go into the www directory. So this is that Hello World app that was downloaded and installed into your app. So you can see there's a CSS directory, an images directory, index.html, and a JS directory. So let's take a look at index.html. It should be familiar with you if you've ever done any website development. You've got your doc type at the top. You know, it, it's, it's just basic HTML. A few things that are specific to mobile development. You'll see that there's a viewport tag here. This ensures that the website, the web app that you have, fits exactly in the screen, the width of the screen that you have. And it's usually, you can't zoom in and out on it either. We usually turn that off right here. Um, just by going minimum scale one, user scalable no, things like that. So these are mobile development specific, uh, and the Cordova example app will come with it ready to go. Uh, it's got a title. Uh, here we got a header. We have a div with an ID device ready. Uh, and then it's got two different uh, P, P classes, paragraph tags inside. Uh, and then at the bottom here, we're including two JavaScript files, Cordova.js and JS slash index.js. So let's actually go into JS index.js, take a look. Uh, this JavaScript might be a little more uh, confusing than you're, you're used to. Um, the main gist of it is, is we do an initialize function on this app variable, and this app variable has a bunch of different func functions itself. Uh, with every Cordova project, before we do any work, we want to listen for this event called device ready. So the native side fires this device called device ready, and we listen for it right here. We add in an event listener to listen for device ready. Once this has been received, we run the callback this dot on device ready, which we'll call this function, which will do a received event, uh, which will go to the received event function. And then this received event function will essentially show and hide uh, different elements. And in our example, if uh, essentially the received event will hide the connecting to device and it will show devices ready once device event has been fired. So this is a fairly roundabout way to go find this device. There's easier ways to do it, but this is the template app we decided on. <laughs> um, but you also notice that it was calling Cordova.js. So it looks like my Cordova has installed, so let's try this again. Cordova platform at iOS. So this time it's actually working. Cordova platform at Android. So if you're following along, feel free to add Android and iOS to your projects. Android takes a little bit longer. that was also in there, you don't need that for now. Essentially, there's a few different places where you can add hooks into your project, like, oh, the project just finished building. Now I'm gonna run this custom script to do something. Um, it's, it's more of an advanced user feature, and not, not everyone uses them, so don't worry about it for now. Uh, so once you've added the platform, we're gonna try building it. Cordova build Android and iOS. Cordova build Android. Uh, the Cordova build Android stuff takes a little bit. Essentially what 
this is doing is it's copying your www folder, the one that we saw. It's going into the platforms directories, and in there will be an Android folder and an iOS folder now, now that we've added those as platforms. And it will copy that, it'll move it into the Android specific folder, uh, and then it'll actually build that into a native Android app. It's building uh, uh, an APK, it's called. So it just built it. And now I can go, if I wanted to, so I actually have my Android device here. I'm going to try and actually install it. Cordova run Android. So I've already built it, now I can run it. So a few simple commands that we're used to. Platform add, build, and run for Cordova. So it's installing the app on my device. And you guys can all see it right there. So it's just a little Cordova symbol, and it's got, it says Apache Cordova, and it says device is ready under it. So the native side is fired back. Uh, let's try on iOS, Cordova run iOS. And for those of you who are following along that haven't done this already, um, you have to install two things. You have to install iOS deploy and iOS sim globally. These are just two um, extra tools that will allow us from the command line to open a simulator and to deploy to device or simulators. So here I just, I don't have a device plugged in, so it's automatically going to go to the simulator. And to do this, you need to have Xcode installed. So there you go, it's installing, but you know, no device ready yet. Still waiting for it. On real devices, it's fairly quick, but on simulators, simulators, they're, they're fairly slow. Um, so there you go, you can see it's, it's device is ready. Um, let's actually make a change. So, let's go to our www directory. Let's open up index.html. And let's, instead of it saying Apache Cordova, let's just say wizard. Save that, just to see how simple this is. And then I would have to, another cool little trick is when you do run, a run will actually build as well. So you don't actually have to do the build command. Cordova run iOS. Let's just do that again. So if we're following along, it's no device connected, trying simulator. It's going to spew out a bunch of stuff. Said it succeeded. We're probably just waiting for my computer to catch up. Wizards. So, you know, that was pretty simple. So as you're developing apps, all you really need to do is edit that www directory. You can add in, using one of the frameworks, you can easily add in navigation, you can add in, uh, pretty much make the app whatever you want, any images you want. The next big part of about Cordova apps are the plugins. Now I've mentioned these a few times. Go ahead. So generally, if you make edits, so that was a great question. Um, but looking back here, now if I go into the platforms folder, you'll see that there's an Android and iOS directory now, because I've added those as platforms. So if I go into Android, uh, this is what you'll see in it. It's got like an Android manifest, it's got a bunch of different folders, uh, and if you went and actually made changes in here, if you made changes to the www at least, it would be rewritten every time you did a build by what's out in the root. So you want to make the changes in the root directory. Um, we don't really need to get too much into detail about this. There are things you can change in here, but we don't need to do that right now. Um, and then similarly, if you go to iOS, you'll see, you know, platform www, and then there's an actual www directory. So this is where everything's going to get copied into. And one thing you'll see that you didn't see before is there's a Cordova.js file here. Where in our root www directory, Cordova.js doesn't exist. You still have to include it in your project, but uh, 
during the build step, it gets added into your project. So that's something just to keep in mind. Okay, um, now let's add a plugin. So to find plugins, you want to go to our plugin registry, plugins.cordova.io. Uh, and then you can see like most downloaded, last updated, things like that. You can search for something, you know, camera. bunch of different ones and you can you know sort by downloads. Oh look, org.apache.cordova. So org.apache.cordova means that it's actually worked on by the Cordova team. Um, these other ones, like this one's worked on by the PhoneGap team. Uh, and generally you have a lot of plugins that are sub contributed by people like you, you know, anybody. People like me. Anyone who wants to contribute a plugin can. They can just our plugin registry is, is very much like NPM. It's actually a fork of NPM, so it's just full of plugins. Our eventual goal is to move all of these over to NPM, though. So that'll be a different workflow when we get there. But uh, for now, I'm going to start with the device plugin because it's easy. Uh, right here, the most downloaded one. Uh, and you'll see what platforms it supports, who works on it, um, total downloads. Uh, you can actually go to its Git repo. You can go to the issue tracker. Um, and then it comes with docs here. So installation, Cordova plugin add. You also saw that right here. So if we just copy this command, Go to our ter terminal and we paste it. Cordova plugin add org.apache.cordova.device. Enter. E so even e right now, even if you don't have the Android stuff downloaded, you can still kind of follow along because we haven't really used any of that stuff yet, other than launching to the simulator for iOS. Um, installed org.apache.cordova.device for iOS. So it installed it for both of my platforms. And now let's go back to the docs. So now I know the plugin is installed. But how do I actually use the plugin? So I have to, I want to add something in my code that actually uses this. Um, so here, there's a quick example. Var device platform equals device dot platform. It gives you examples of using these specific APIs. So uh, this is this one is a device UUID, which is something um, device dot version. Uh, so there's a, a bunch of different examples on how to use it. Um, I don't really need to care too much about this, but the main thing is you want to wait until after the device ready event has been fired. So. Let's actually go into our www.js, index.js. And we know that when on device ready uh, function right here, when it fires, it goes to app.received event. But I'm also going to add in another thing right here. I'm just going to do something simple alert device.version. So the variable device is now going to be defined. It's going to be defined in Cordova.js. When I install a plugin, that JavaScript will go into Cordova.js. Uh, and then it has a property dot version. So let's just give it a Cordova run.
as it does its thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and launch this on. So I'm using a program called Droid at Screen. It doesn't seem to be playing really nice today, but essentially it's showing my Android device on the screen. Um, so as this is installing, <coughs> we'll see it do something. It's just replacing the APK right now. Launching on your device in iOS is quite a pain. Apple has put quite a few barriers in the way. For instance, you have to join their developer program and being, be a paid member, which costs $100 a year. So before you even want to launch your app from Xcode onto your device, you have to pay $100, and then you have to do something called provisioning your device, which is going through a bunch of steps with Apple, enabling, you know, hitting a few checkboxes, making sure that the device is able to be developed on. Uh, we're not going to go over any of those steps today because I'm not a fan of those barriers. Uh, it's quite a process. Um, but what I will do is show you guys an alternate way to launch what's in your www directory onto your phones to be able to test and develop and play around with. And then once you know you're ready, that you really want to deploy something on iOS, I'd recommend you go, you know, sign up for their program so you can deploy to their app store and de even test on your device as, a, as an app. Uh, so the solution for that is the reason why we installed PhoneGap. Uh, it's the PhoneGap developer app. Uh, so if you go back to the workshop, documentation, you'll see I have a section on the PhoneGap developer app. So, you know, if you have your device, iOS or Android or Windows, go to your app stores, download the PhoneGap developer app. Go ahead, you can do it right now. You can all connect to my machine. The only requirement is that the laptop you're working off and your phone are on the same network. So we're all on the same Wi-Fi network, I believe. I think we're all on the Omni network. Actually, I should probably jump on. Um, Omni Ballroom. PhoneGap is actually what Cordova used to be called. Cordova was named PhoneGap. It was a small company up in, Nito in Vancouver called Nitobi that made it. I worked for them. And they got bought by Adobe, and so we decided that we wanted to make sure Cordova stayed open source for free, and all these other companies that are contributing to it can keep contributing. We donated the project to Apache, and that's why it's the name Apache Cordova. And we still contribute to it. PhoneGap is just a distribution of Cordova. So it, it can work with Cordova projects. It's almost like an alternative, but it's, PhoneGap uses Cordova under the hood. It's like an engine for it. Uh, so we wanted to use the PhoneGap developer app today just because it's super, it's dead simple to use, and it works really well with our example. So if, you, if you've downloaded it onto your phone, uh, feel free to open it. Anyone having issues finding it or downloading it? 
show you guys what it looks like. So you'll, you'll see something like this. It's asking for a server address and it wants to connect. Everyone kind of, are people at this point yet? So, if I go back to my Cordova project and I run the command, uh, if you're following along with the workshop, the command is phone gap serve. Or even if you go here, you know, it, it tells you install phone gap, download the mobile app, wirelessly pair the devices. So once you do phone gap serve, it gives you an IP to connect to, and then on the phone you enter in that IP. So in my in my app, right here, in the root of my app, I just go phone gap serve. And remember, the phone and the laptop have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. Starting a server. So it's creating a server. So I was having this bug yesterday. I, I don't know if others are seeing it too. Um, for me, it's actually not giving me my IP address like it should. Uh, so to, I don't know if it's a bug with PhoneGap or if there's something wrong with my machine. Um, but to get around this, I went to, at least on Mac, I went to Open Network Preferences. I just, I just need to grab my IP, essentially. Um, advanced? Where was I? Uh, Wi-Fi? No, that's not it. Uh, right here, TCP IP. Uh, and then right here is the address, IP. B4. So this should have popped up in my phone gap serve command. Are other people who are doing it on their laptops seeing their own phone gap serve uh, IP address pop up? You are? Yeah. You are? You did. Okay, good. So it's probably something wrong with my machine. I don't know what's going on, but I'll have to debug it. So if go to your Cordova project, type phone gap serve. It should give you an IP. Enter in that IP in the app now with the port, the way it's defined. It's, it's, it's port 3000 by default. 192 dot, if, or if you're, not, if you're not doing it on your laptop, feel free to connect to mine up here on the, with, with the developer app. So feel free to enter my IP address if you want. 192.168.181.40. Click connect. And you can see it, uh, it'll catch up in a second, but the alert that I added in, it popped up on my device. You can see the phone, it, it, I, I have it on my device, and all of you with iOS should be able to get this on your device now. Any, any issues? I was trying to lock the Oh, do you, do you, do you try to connect to mine? Because I don't have the ability to lock the Okay. Uh, you don't need Xcode for this. So if you, you don't need Xcode, so you can just CD into your Cordova project you created and just type phone gap serve and it should give you the IP. So this is to circumvent having to go through the Apple system and even on all you people on Android, like this is an easy way to get it on your device. And one really cool feature about this is that it, it actually watches your directory. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this serving Now I'm actually going to go into my www directory, my index.html, and I'm going to change this. I'm just changing my header in my app. I'm going to save it. Now you're going to see my, my phone gap server side, it's going crazy. It's doing stuff. What it's actually doing is resending your www folder. So I actually don't need to redeploy or reconnect, it's all my changes are automatically displayed on my phone once it catches up. Which is a pretty pretty awesome feature if you're doing some development. 
Now the thing with the PhoneGap developer app is it comes with all of the default Apache plugins installed, but any of the community ones, it can't handle that use case. So, not yet. So, uh, you can already have access to your camera, your device, your contacts, things like that by using the right API. But before you do that, I would always recommend installing that plugin in your project first. So, hopefully now all of you have something on your device. Um, if you already had an Android device, you should be able to launch to it if you enabled USB debugging. I included instructions for that um, in, the, in the deploying to device part for Android. Enable USB debugging. To access this, go to your settings, open up the developer options and system settings. To open up developer, you actually have to go to settings about phone, tap the build number seven times, and then it'll open up a new option for developer options. So they have developer options hidden by default on Android. Uh, and then enable USB debugging. And then you can do Cordova run Android and it'll launch to your device like I'm doing. No provisioning, nothing. It's super easy to develop for Android. There's no barrier there. Um, so from here on, it's, it's, it's just start adding plugins and, and editing your WW folders. And you're, you're making apps. If you actually do Cordova run Android, it'll actually install that app onto your device. Right now, for iOS, since none of us have provisioning profiles, we're not actually installing the app. We're just creating a server and receiving that content in the PhoneGap developer app. So if you went offline, if you turned your server off, the PhoneGap developer app won't have your app available. It's only for development, but if you actually want to be able to install apps on your iPhone devices, you're going to need to either jailbreak, which you could do if you want, and or um, sign up for an Apple uh, developer account, pay the hundred dollars, provision your device. It's not fun stuff, I'll tell you that. But <laughs> we've had a lot of people struggle with that over the years. Uh, and Apple's always updating that process, so the guides are always changing and whatnot, but it's fine. Um, so, how about I do an example of using the camera? But the problem with the camera is if you want to test it on your simulator or emulators, it won't work. The camera is a, you need to be testing on a device. So it will work in the PhoneGap developer app. Uh, so let's give it a shot. I'm going to go ahead and add Cordova plugin add. And I already know the ID for camera, but if you didn't, you could go to the plugin site and find it. Org.apache.cordova.camera. Simple. Fetch the plugin from the registry. So I actually want to look at some documentation because I never actually remember. Um, hey, oh, there it is. This site's been running a little slow today. too much about styling right now. So I'm going to edit my index.html. Uh, I'm going to add a new button. So I'm giving it an ID of camera. Give it an on-click event. So what the 
on-click event does is when it clicks, whatever I have in the on-click event, it'll, it'll do that. Uh, and I'm going to make a take picture function. Okay, pretty simple. Um, save that. Go to my JS. Uh, and now I have to create that function. Uh, I called it function take picture. So when that div gets clicked, it's going to come here. Simple. Uh, and now I'm actually going to use I'm going to take this example and use this, and I'll, and I'll talk about it as I'm doing it. So, what, the, what this is doing is going navigator.camera and I get picture. So, when you install the camera plugin, there is this global variable called camera, which is attached to navigator, and it has a few different functions of its own. Uh, the main one that we're going to be using is called get picture. Uh, and then on success, it's going to run this on success function. Uh, and on, on fail, it's going to alert, it's going to do this alert, fail because something. So if it's successful, in this example, so first off, before I get there, it takes a success, it takes a failure, and it takes some options right here. And in our case, the options is a quality field, so you can set the quality of the image. Uh, and it's got a destination type. Um, you can learn more about that stuff by reading the docs. It's essentially where do you want to save it, what type of format do you want to save it in, things like that. Uh, and the docs go into quite a bit of detail about it. Uh, but the main thing that we're concerned with is this on success. So what this guy is doing, it's grabbing an element by ID named my image. We, we don't have this uh, we don't have this element yet, but the element is an image element, and it's going to set that image element source to whatever we just grabbed, and it's going to be passed into the success callback in this image data argument. So, navigator.camera, I get picture. It's, if it's successful, if we take a picture, it's going to go into this on success, and it's going to pass in the successful data, the actual image, and we use that image by we pass that image right here into image source, and we can say what kind of image it is. So, the last step for this to work is for us to actually create an element called my image. So go back to your index.html. After this button we just added, let's create an image. Image source equals nothing. ID equals and here is where we want to have my image. Because our callback, our success callback, is looking for document dot get element by ID. So you need to have an element that ID is my image. And then I can just go ahead and close this image tag. You don't need to do a, a closing tag. You can just add the slash at the end. Um, so on success, it's going to come, it's going to grab this image based on the ID, and then it's going to add a new value for source, which will be my image. I'm going to go ahead, save and quit. I think it's just updating the file. So I, I, I gotta wait till device is ready. So usually you, you want to wait till device is ready before you do any of this stuff. So device ready doesn't seem to be firing for me. Maybe I made a mistake.
the image. <laughs> uh, it, uh, so you can see my mistake. I didn't set a width or height property for it. It just blew up, right? This is where I probably want to go back and I know the file's changed, it just needs to reload it. Reload. going to reserve it. Actually, better yet, I'm just going to run it. You, I could reserve it, but I feel like this is going to be a little faster. So I'm just deploying the app to my device. It's building it. Compiling it. Build successful installing the app on my device. See, like my device is this kind of poppy thing, hopefully. It's ready, I'm just waiting for the screen to catch up. So there you go, it, it swapped to my app. I clicked OK. I'm going to go ahead and click me. Button. And I could style that button, you know, I could do whatever I want to it. It's, I just did it as a quick example. So I'm going to go ahead and take my picture. Click the big check mark. And you can see, it, you know, I, I set the width and height and it added it there. So, you know, obviously you can, using HTML, CSS, you can put it where you want, you can style it how you want, but the main point of this was, look, I installed that camera plugin, I just called navigator.camera.getPicture, which was, you know, very easy to find when I just went to the 
documentation and it showed me an example. I literally copied this example. As long as you know what's going on in it, which isn't too hard to find out, you know, with the on success, on fail, callbacks, options, right? And it also talks about this a little uh, uh, higher up. And then I assigned that using, you know, some basic HTML JavaScript. Um, I, I figure, you know, a lot of you, if you haven't done HTML stuff before, even this document .data element by ID might be a little tricky. But this, these are the first steps of taking your web app and building it into uh, a hybrid Cordova app. Um, so hopefully you guys all have something on your devices. I think that's it for today. If you want to build a real app, I do have, um, I'm going to share these slides in, in the workshop, uh, the slides I showed you. Uh, and you can go take a look at some of these frameworks, which will really make your life easy. But even before then, just fool around. Play around with your index. Play around with your JavaScript. Try to make little things. You know, make a math function that adds something. You know, assign it to a button. Or things like that. Just fool around. Find, you know, and if you have an idea, you can get geolocation. You can get accelerometer data. You can get, you know, there, pretty much anything that your, any sensor your phone has, you can get. Even push notifications. Things like that. Those are a bit more advanced, but. Uh, and if you're on iOS, you can already deploy to your simulator by running Cordova Run iOS. Or if you want to test on your iOS device, phone gap developer. That's the best way to go for now. Uh, and then at the bottom of this workshop doc, I also have, uh, well, uh, these are the next steps. We're not there yet, but I'll fill out the bottom a bit more. We can easily do another session on like debugging mobile apps creating, you know, a, a simple app that pulls from an API, something like that. So if people want, I could do a follow-up, maybe next week. Um, but this is a step in the direction of building mobile apps for everybody. That's it for my talk. Feel free to ask me questions.